Updates on a sister bridezilla, a crazy mum wannabe bridezilla, and the man who lost faith over his poem having a wholesome ending update just recently. Hello my snacks, welcome back, my name is Jack. You've probably come across these stories before on this channel, but a bunch of these have gotten updates over the last week or so, so I thought we'd visit them back again and get the whole tale all in a nice completed bow. Anyway, enjoy! So this insane month-long calamity began in our slash relationships. You may have come across it. My sister says I can't be in her wedding if I bring my boyfriend of five years. And just recently it's been shared on the best of Redditor updates. And my god is there a lot of updates and wow things get very physical and violent. And just, I, yeah, we just need to get into it. I met my boyfriend in college seven years ago, and we started dating five years ago. He is super close and loving with my family. He was there at my niece's births, baptisms, Christmas, vacations, etc. We are extremely committed to each other for the long run, but don't want to get married until we are financially stable and both our careers are where we want them to be. My sister has been with her fiancé for two years and engaged for six months. My sister is the type of girl who has dreamed of getting married since she was a little girl. It didn't matter who proposed, she just wanted to be married. I have never cared if I got married or not. As long as I have a good career and a happy relationship, I'm fine. In the beginning of her relationship, she tricked me into going on a double date with her fiance and his brother. She had said it was dinner with her and a friend, and it was most definitely not. The brother kept making passes at me the whole time, and I told him I had a boyfriend, and the whole situation made me uncomfortable. At their engagement party, my boyfriend noticed that the brother wouldn't stop staring at me, and we tried our best to avoid him. Every time I have seen this guy, he has been weird towards me. My sister wanted me, my twin, fraternal, and two brothers in her wedding. The wedding is supposed to be next next month in the beginning of May. My sister just told me that I'm going to be walking down the aisle with her fiancé's brother. I told her that he makes me uncomfortable, and I thought I would be walking with my own brother. Apparently, this is something her fiancé is insisting, and she wants to make him happy. Seems like a pretty weird thing to insist, and I know it's some scheme between the two brothers. My other siblings also thought it was weird and voiced their objection to our sister. She got upset and said this is her wedding and she'll do what she wants. I told my boyfriend this and he was upset for me. Now he's confident enough in himself that he knows this guy would never be competition, but he knows how uncomfortable I am with this situation. The other day we had a family dinner at my mom's house. I took this as an opportunity to bring up the aisle situation with my mother around. My sister got extremely upset and started crying saying I was trying to ruin her marriage. I was so confused, as was everyone else, and tried to explain that he makes me and my boyfriend extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, she does mention that a lot. But she then said that I can't bring my boyfriend to her wedding anymore, and if I do, I'm no longer a bridesmaid. She gave no reason as to why I can't bring him, and my siblings were just as upset, considering they like my boyfriend a lot better than my sister's fiancé. I thought I would give her a few days to calm down and rethink, but she has not changed her mind. My 19-year-old brother's girlfriend is still invited to the wedding. My boyfriend is an incredible guy and has been nothing but kind and generous to my sister. His feelings are hurt, but he still wants me to go to the wedding. I think my sister is being an unreasonable a-hole and I will be pretty annoyed at the wedding if my life partner is not there with me. Being her bridesmaid is something I can live without. So should I bring my boyfriend or go without him? Or should I demand that my boyfriend be allowed to come to her wedding and that she's being super unfair? I love my sister, but I don't understand why she's forcing some silly request by her creepy brother-in-law. I don't know what to do and my family is no help either. So we've got a sister trying to prop up their other sister as some sort of fresh feed for another family member. And a theory that this might be a scheme between the two brothers to be getting with two people in the same family. Oh, that's so hot. Oh. But then also, why would this be possibly ruining the sister's marriage just because you don't want to hook up potentially with another guy while you're already in a relationship? I'm so confused. Well, the best thing to do is to call their bluff, as Opie does so in the update and decides to just step down and be a normal wedding guest. She goes straight to saying that most of the comments said I shouldn't go to the wedding at all, but she is my sister and I don't want to miss her wedding. 
I went to my parents' house with my brothers and told them about everything the brother-in-law has done that makes me super uncomfortable and how my sister is disrespecting my relationship. My dad was pretty mad about the date stunt that she pulled and is on my side. My mum, however, says that I need to try and resolve this with her because if I am not part of the wedding party, people will talk. Good, let them. So you can then talk about how your sister was trying to get you to cheat on your partner for her own giddiness. I honestly couldn't give two schmitz about what my extended family has to say. My mum called a family meeting and told my sister and my twin to come to the house. My dad asked her why I was no longer walking with my brother, to which she responded saying that it's what her fiancé wants, and she just wants to make him happy. I pressed the issue, asking why is this such a big deal for me to walk with him, and that he's super weird and I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to assault me, but that really ticked her off. She started crying and yelling again, saying a bunch of BS how this is all she's ever wanted and we're trying to ruin a special day, blah, blah, blah. I was tired of the arguing and just straight up said, I'll go to the wedding as a guest then and I'm leaving before the reception. My twin and younger brother took my side and said they don't want to be in the wedding party if I'm not. This made my sister lose her mind. She was screaming now, calling me a bunch of names that I can't say on this sub, a beer. Hey, I'll see you next Tuesday, a hua, and also calling my boyfriend's names. I decided to leave and let my parents calm her down, but before I could walk out, she ran at me and yanked my hair, still screaming. She wouldn't let go, so I yanked hers too, and then she let go. She has extensions, and apparently I screwed them up, and then ripped some hair out. She tried to grab me again, so I punched her in the face. I didn't mean to hit her, it was just my instant reaction to someone coming out at me. So now, she has a black eye, a cut on her cheek, and missing some hair. She's absolutely livid because her bachelorette party is next week. My mom is mad at me, my dad is not. My sister is now saying that she's going to press charges against me. Like, can she actually do that or is she just trying to scare me? She's also really mad because my other siblings won't be in the wedding. She told my mom if I apologize to her and agree to be in the wedding, she'll let me walk with my brother. I feel like that is BS and she will still make me walk with the brother-in-law last minute. At this point, I feel like it's not worth the trouble and I just don't want to go at all. My mom and dad want me to do what she asked because they're paying for the wedding and want all their kids there. My twin and younger brother said they'll do whatever I want to do, but I don't think I should be the reason they don't go. My boyfriend feels like he started all this drama when none of it is his fault. My sister believes I ruined her wedding, she ruined it herself, and I don't know what to do. So options are to go to the wedding as a guest, be in the wedding, or not go at all. My parents will be upset if I don't go, and I really don't want any more tension, but she disrespected me in my relationship. As soon as this wedding is over, I'm going to limit my contact with her for a while. After 2LDR, it's uh, really interesting that they're still pondering to go or not, despite being assaulted by the bride. Top comment at the time was saying, that, yeah, just don't go. She attacked you first as well, so you could probably claim self-defense. After dealing with such a garbage human being, yeah, don't don't go to the wedding. She should have to suffer the consequences of her actions. And that seems to be the majority opinion here that, yes, yeah, she can try and press charges, but end of the day, there are witnesses all saying that would, well, she's the one who struck first. You were then doing self-defense. Also agreeing that, yeah, if you do go and apologize, etc., she's just going to try and set you up again. There is no way someone who is this doubling down on this idea is going to at all let you get away with not having to deal with it. Which then brings us to the start of May, the final update date where the wedding took part, where we finally learn where the root of this sister's insecurities come from, and how it turns out she's also been spoofing her actual fiancé along as well. Starting off with a quick little uh, refresher on things, mentions it's definitely not a race issue, her family is French and Puerto Rican, boyfriend is Italian, sister's fiancé is white or something, she doesn't really know his ethnicity, so there's no issue that like, you know, she thinks that the boyfriend doesn't deserve to be a part of the family bloodline. It's also not an issue of money or something. The only reason that she's getting paid so much for the wedding compared to herself is because that she went to college while the sister didn't. Also, the only reason that the family isn't really revoking the paying for the wedding is because it's already been paid for. So even if the sister
Mr. was beating people up around them, they can't really do anything about it at this point. In regards to the bachelorette party, my sister did have a black eye still at her bachelorette party and changed the venue to a darker place and she wore lots of makeup. My twin, brothers, and me and my boyfriend went to the club that night instead and had a fabulous time and got trashed. I heard from a friend that she was telling everyone she got hit with a car door and not my fist. Really? Out of all the things you could have bumped into? A car door? <laughs> So my sister has always been a bit unhinged. When she was in high school, her and my twin used to fight all the time. Every breakup my sister has ever had, she has broke down and shut down completely and felt her life is over. I've seen this since she was 12. I used to get in lots of arguments with my parents over them excusing her behavior, which ultimately made me decide to go to college across the country. During college, I rarely talked to her. When I came back home, she had matured and our relationship was been good for a while. She still occasionally has huge meltdowns over small things like this wedding. Now, to be fair, a wedding isn't exactly a small thing, but I understand what they mean. Again, before the wedding, I sent my future brother-in-law a text asking why him and his brother are so obsessed with me, to which he didn't respond to. Me and my dad went down to his place, and he said my sister was the one who kept telling him that I was interested and would leave my boyfriend. So I don't even know which one of them came up with this plan. My dad got mad and told him to leave me and my boyfriend the hell alone. So yeah, turns out this brother-in-law is a genuinely innocent victim in this entire scenario. He's not trying to be a creep, he's just being fed lies. I know there isn't a law against destroying someone's public perception by others, but you know, sometimes there should be. So I have told my sister to go to therapy for years and she's refused. I tried to have my mum see if she can get her to go to family therapy with me and she also refused, but said she would talk with me and my mum. When her and her fiance first started dating, she brought him to a work New Year's party and he brought his brother and I also attended. This was her first boyfriend that had shown any interest in getting married one day. I guess the brother had said he found me very attractive and my sister instantly jumped the gun on that. She told him that I was not in a serious relationship. I had been with my boyfriend for three years at the time and he had a strong chance with me and he's just my type. Which is wrong. So he's been under the impression this entire time that my boyfriend is just a a placeholder, which is extremely not the case. He's just as delusional as my sister. This made no sense to me why she did this, because my twin is single. <laughs> we are fraternal, so we don't look the same, and we're different heights with very different personalities, but she's still a very pretty girl and single. My sister has expressed some jealousy of my relationship over the years, so that could be a factor in her trying to break us up. She's always made comments about how she'll never have what I have with my boyfriend. About a month ago, right before her ultimatum, she found found out she's pregnant. I didn't know. She thinks if she doesn't make this brother thing happen, then her fiance will leave her and being a single mom is more frightening for her than her family hating her. It's still early enough that she does have other options, but she's committed to this for some reason. This was an intense conversation and also talked about other things. So this was all I could get out of her before my patience ran out. I did kind of snap on her and said some things along the lines of, sorry, you're so pathetic that you date any guy who looks at you and you still can't find a good relationship and I can. You will be divorced before labor. Ooh, ouch. Oh my God. Yes, it was a little mean, but I was very heated in the moment and wanted to say something worse. What could you say that would be worse than that to someone who's going through what they are right now? Damn girl, you, I'm scared of you. Funnily enough, my boyfriend is very adamant about us going to the wedding, despite all the bullshit my sister is putting him through. My boyfriend doesn't have close relationships with his siblings and has always loved being a part of this family. He wants me to maintain a relationship with mine so I don't regret it later. He still hurts though that my sister has been going through these great lengths to get him out of the picture. I've tried to reassure him the best I can that everyone still loves him and I always will. We're going for the ceremony as guests and then leaving as soon as they say I do. My two brothers and twin sister are walking together as a trio. We took wedding pictures together at a park so our parents could have something of all of us and we looked good. They haven't decided yet if they're staying for the whole wedding, but they're gonna feel it out. My older brother is staying the whole time so he can watch the brother and have some words with him. A lot of people said to have my boyfriend propose at her wedding, but I don't care enough to deliberately try and ruin her wedding. That will not make the situation better in the slightest, and I honestly don't ever want a public proposal, and I think that's super tacky. Me and my boyfriend have just been enjoying us and not worrying about any of this BS. 
So, after the wedding. So what happened at the wedding? I showed up in my bridesmaid dress because I wasn't gonna go and buy another one and it's a very nice dress. Me and my boyfriend tried to go in as late as we could to limit the amount of family asking me why I'm not in the wedding. A few uncles and aunts asked and I just said my sister lost her mind and to ask her. I tried to stay with some cousins who I told what happened and know how my sister is an occasional nut. The ones who knew that my boyfriend's invite was revoked were mad considering some of their plus ones were just dates. We sat in the front row where my sister, her husband and the brother could see me with my very serious, handsome, amazing, loving boyfriend. He held my hand the whole time and made sure I was okay. The wedding just confirmed me not wanting a big wedding. We can have a party, at most. It was only once that the brother was staring at me and I quickly shut that down by kissing my boyfriend. As soon as they all walked back down the aisle, I said my goodbyes to the people that deserved it and we left. We went to a bar and danced and had a good time. I'm glad I went to the wedding so I can say I told you so when this marriage ends in six months. I'm glad that delusional sob saw me kissing the man I love because that will never be him. My twin had quite a few drinks at the wedding and was being very mouthy with my sister. I didn't ask her to say something, but she would have done that with or without views. My younger brother told almost every family member that my sister went ape on me, and that's why I wasn't at the reception. My older brother did talk to the brother-in-law, but I don't know what he said. I didn't ask many other questions, and this is just what they told me. I feel really bad for my sister, honestly. She baby-trapped herself with a subpar bottom feeder. That man has zero qualities that would make me jump through all these hoops. He has the personality of an added ass sandal. I wish my sister had more self-respect and raised her standards. I don't know much about their relationship and if he's abusive. I would like to think that she at least has that much respect for herself to not put up with that. Maybe they're in love. Maybe he's using her. Who knows? This marriage may not last, but she's now attached to him for at least the next 18 years. While I sort of get her reasoning for not wanting to be a single mom, my brother is a single dad and doing just fine. I don't plan on talking to her for quite a while. I don't know how things turned out for them for not getting me with the brother. After prying, they still wouldn't give me clear answers, so I don't know how serious the husband actually is about his loser brother getting laid. Those brothers were either neglected or breastfed till they were teens. I was already going on vacation this summer with my boyfriend, but I might extend it now. Who knows? May even get married in France for schmitz and giggles. Anyways, thanks for all the support. Sorry that this ending wasn't as dramatic as you all wanted it to be. I'm not expecting an apology. I honestly don't care anymore, and I just want to move on with my life and be happy and not deal with any more psycho behavior. I'm just glad that I haven't received any messages from brother-in-law or my mom and that I have a great man. If there's any questions I missed, feel free to let me know. A lot of your comments made me and my boyfriend laugh. Now, some did want to make a little jab at her for suggesting to get with her twin instead of her as if she should have to deal with the scraps. To which the OP does respond saying that, no, 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 she's not saying he should go for her. She's saying that I don't know why my sister didn't try to set them up in the beginning instead of me. To which another commented chime in accurately, she didn't try to set them up in the beginning because she was trying to destroy your relationship because she is jealous of it. That's the only reason why. So to her, if she can't have what you have, then you can't have it either. And yeah, as fun as it is to have dramatic endings to these crazy updates, it's nice that for more often than not, they kind of just fizzle away and resolve peacefully. But that wasn't the only wedding story that's gotten some fresh updates. This one that began over six months ago, again, you probably already are aware of it, but hey, if you want to just skip to the updates, go right ahead. For now though, those who aren't caught up with the whole ordeal, am I the a-hole for telling my mom if she wants to plan a wedding to get remarried? I'm 32 female, recently started planning my wedding with my fiance, 31 female, and my mom immediately jumped to help us plan. I thought at first it'd be okay, but she will call vendors and venues she likes, will give them my information so they can call me about a scheduled time and my mom swoops in to say it'd be rude not to go since they invited you it was obvious it was her after the third time when she wouldn't stop giggling and admitted to calling beforehand and making appointments i wouldn't take the issue with this but my mom and i have wildly different tastes every time me or my fiance tell her something like 
how we want to have this color for the table, clothes, or, or these flowers. She'll tell us that they look bad and will give us her own plan. She recently showed us a massive binder of different ideas she wants us to look through. It's exhausting. At every step, she will insist on looking at her ideas, and when we reject them, she'll throw a fit and tell me I don't love her because I ignore all her wishes. I also want to add, I think she's had it in her head since I was a kid that she'd plan my wedding. Even before I came out and dated men, she'd comment on how excited she was for the wedding. And when me and, well, I told her that my fiance proposed, she immediately started berating me about when we'd have the wedding so she could help us plan it. Part of it is that when she married my dad, it was a small courthouse affair because she was pregnant with me at the time and never got a proper wedding. My dad also died 17 years ago and she dates sporadically, but never for longer than a few months. The last time me and my fiance went to see a venue, she tagged along and made all these comments on how gross everything was, pointing out all the tiny things wrong with it all. The person showing us was getting annoyed, my fiance was getting annoyed, and so was I. She eventually said, if this is where my wedding was, I'd never even consider this dump. Despite it being absolutely beautiful and within the budget, I snapped and told her that if she wanted to plan a wedding so badly, she should get remarried. It was cruel, but I was so tired of her trying to have a perfect wedding through me. My fiance thinks I'm not at fault, but the rest of my family doesn't. Am I the a-hole? And in case you think she's paying for the wedding, no, the mother is not paying a penny at all. And whether or not she's set boundaries at all or attempted it, yes, and clearly the mother doesn't seem to care or even respect them. So what can she do? Well, obviously, as people say in the next tactic for you is to just limit her ability to know what's going on. Give her a strict info diet. But as you find out in the update, this doesn't really work well at all. So just over two weeks later, the OP returns to Reddit. OP took everyone's advice, saying that they looked at the comments together and we agreed, my partner and I, that we both need to grow spines. Our wedding planner is truly a saint and had no problem setting up passwords with vendors like some people suggested, and it was a great suggestion, so thank you. We then invited my mom to dinner and told her that she has to stop trying to help us with the wedding. It started off bad as she brought her binder and had her own wedding dress in her car. Her dress is in very bad condition, would not fit either me or my fiance, and is quite frankly hideous. I would never say that to her face, though I've told her every time she's asked what I want to pick out my own dress and that she should keep hers for if she wants to get remarried. She assumed that we had invited her to apologize and let her plan the wedding however she wanted. How she jumped to that conclusion, I have no idea. So we lied about not wanting her to get overly stressed in the hope she'd take it better than telling her that she's been causing problems and that she hasn't been helpful. But even that she didn't take well and started crying saying all she ever wanted was for me to have the perfect wedding and she'd already given up getting the perfect son-in-law and grandchildren so at the least we could let her plan the wedding. Oh, just a subtle spit of homophobia there, isn't it? It stunned us both as she has never said a bad word about me liking women. Not when I came out, not when I got my first girlfriend, not when me and my fiance got engaged. So that put me over the edge and I told her that she wasn't going to plan anything. She was a guest and nothing more and I would be cutting her speech if she was going to behave like a child. She had a full-on tantrum, ironic, so me and my fiancé paid and left her to cry and scream in the restaurant. You go, mom. You prove to them you're not a child by acting like a child. Hmm. So that was all fine and dandy until our florist called to tell us my mom had called to try and get the flower arrangements changed behind our back. I called her and she tried to lie until she realized she was backed into a corner and admitted to doing it because she knew that was the best and was trying to help. Needless to say that I've now uninvited her from the wedding with the full support of my fiance and my soon-to-be mother-in-law and father-in-law. So it seems like things were resolved by then. Others saying in the comments, yeah, make sure you get some security on the wedding day because you know she's going to try and turn up. Highlighting a relevant comment here when someone asks, like, does she know that same-gender couples can have kids? Obviously not through the traditional way, but we're not in the 1500s anymore. Well, apparently mum is well aware, but apparently it wouldn't count if we adopted or my fiance carried the child 
because biologically it wouldn't be her grandchild. I can't carry a child because of health complications, and me and my fiance have agreed that if we ever do have kids, it won't be for at least a few years. Which isn't good enough for her. She wants us to pop out grandbabies for her yesterday. So okay, that then also raises a point. You can't biologically have kids, or at least you are it's very difficult for you. Surely she'd understand that then, even if you were straight. It's not like you can have kids. Well, nope, apparently all reasoning like that just falls on deaf ears. So it seems like it's a very justifiable lost cause. Don't invite her to the wedding. Enjoy the wonderful bliss you two will have together. But three months later, we turn up in just no mother-in-law. Because who could have seen this coming? My mom tried to crash my wedding and is now guilt tripping me. I'm so done. I'm just so done with her. Three months of hell, but finally me and my wife are happily married. Not once did my mom think of me and what I wanted. She wouldn't stop trying to call vendors, get things changed and try to guess the passwords. At one point, we changed the passwords every week to random things so that she couldn't guess them. We didn't post the date anywhere and had on the invitations that guests could share the date and location, yet somehow she got both. We even told her that the stress was too much and we were going to wait until the summer or later to get married, and she screamed at us, telling us that we were horrible and cancelling it to spite her. We blocked her phone number, reduced the wedding budget significantly so we could hire good security, thank god we did, and gave them pictures of her because somehow she found out the date, time and location, and came in her goddamn wedding dress and demanded to be let in because it was her wedding. I am beyond done. I'm typing this as me and my wife are waiting to get on our plane to go home after an incredible honeymoon. We even looked at job openings and apartments that are at least six hours away from where we currently live because my loving mother has taken to sending us letters, calling me a horrible daughter and sending packages that are piles of pictures from when I was a kid and I loved her unconditionally with notes asking why I don't love her anymore and why I banned her from the wedding. How excited she was for it how it was her right as my mum to go. She tried to guilt me, she cursed me out, and what? Thought I'd give up, let her do whatever she wants and run my life for me? As well as act as if she was not being a pain in my butt since I told her that me and my wife were beginning to plan the wedding. My best friend, who was house-sitting, got the honour of opening them all and sending us the contents. She hand-delivered the first one the day after the wedding while we were on the plane. I know because the ring doorbell caught it and all of the other ones she delivered, as well as the ones the mailman received. I'm fuming, I'm mad, and I was just wanting to scream because what the hell? She tried to ruin my wedding. My own mother tried to ruin my wedding and is trying to make me feel bad. She tried to plan my wedding for me, threw a tantrum when I asked her not to, tried to sabotage it, and then crashed it. But sure, I'm the problem here. They go on to make an edit to remind everyone as to the previous posts and the drama they contained. And overall, it seems that it's best to now set up that restraining order idea, or at least some sort of cease and desist. And the restraining order seems to be the best method that OP thinks of doing right now. Also trying to figure out who is the family mole? Who spilled the beans? Some say that, yeah, you could tell each person a different place you're moving to and see what info makes it back to your mother. Try that old Tyrion Lannister tactic in Game of Thrones. So that last post was back in February, and just 10 days ago we've got the latest update where the OP has found the culprit. And despite her finding out it's her cousin, you'll soon realize in the story that, okay, yeah, the cousin isn't exactly a too big of an a-hole in this scenario. So, I found out who told my mum where and when the wedding was. There was no grand plan, we'd wanted to do that after getting a little more settled into our new lives. I went back recently for work and invited one of my cousins out to lunch, picking somewhere my mum wouldn't go so that there'd be no accidental run-ins. Me and this cousin are really close. We're similar in age and she was one of the bridesmaids. She's like a sister to me. She's also the most timid, shy, non-confrontational person ever. Big red flag, I know. So we went out to lunch and who showed up? My mother. She showed up and was all like, Oh, hi, I didn't know you were in town. Why didn't you call me? Lovely day we're having. How's your wife, mother-in-law and father-in-law? Have you two started talking about kids yet? <laughs> she was trying to be civil. I wish she'd screamed and cried so I could have looked like the sane one, but my cousin wouldn't look at me. Not only did she tell my mom that we would be going out to lunch, but she told my mom about the wedding. She tells me that her mom, my aunt, and my mom pressured her into it, since they knew she'd know if the wedding was actually pushed back. And she told them. She told them despite knowing how crazy my mom is and how much crazier she's become. I'm not even angry. I just feel betrayed and so, so happy that me and my wife didn't tell anyone where we were moving so my mom couldn't show up at our door. 
I've had to cut off my cousin, the girl I saw as my sister, because she couldn't keep her mouth shut despite knowing. And I can't reiterate this enough. Every detail about how my mom was when she was helping us plan the wedding. I'm cutting contact with my entire family. It's not worth it. If you let in a little crazy, they'll let in the rest of the crazy. Now, I know I'm just an observer in this, but personally, I feel like that was a bit of an unnecessarily nuclear option to take here. As the OP admits, they clearly are aware of how much of a doormat this cousin is. You hate on your cousin for doing what she did despite knowing who the mother is, but, you know, flip that back on yourself. You still told your cousin about all these details despite knowing how much of a folder they are? Not to really say it excuses them, you know, giving permission, in a sense, to this crazy mother to instigate OP further, but I don't know, I feel like it's a bit of an attack. It's a bit of a back and forth in the comments about this, some say that no, yeah, she wasn't selfish, she was timid and non-confrontational, she was run over because she's not able to withstand pressure. Doesn't make her selfish, it just makes her weak. But also, it all makes her a terrible person because she could have given Opie a heads up or even given mother-in-law the wrong information if she was worried about keeping the peace. And yeah, you know what, I can actually see that. I think that does change my opinion on her a bit because yeah, why didn't she at least give Opie the heads up that hey, I'm sorry, I'm folded because I'm a weak piece of be- <laughs> Either way, it seems like Regardless, they've had a happy wedding and a happy marriage, so all the best to OP in their future. Now, just quickly gotta go to this update too. Back in Today I Screwed Up, we read a story a while ago about a man who lost his faith over a poem and ended up losing his job, possibly his family as well. It was a crazy mess of sorts, but there is a recent update just 12 hours ago. To TLDR it all, this man has a daughter who is dying of cancer. His wife is just thinking that if they pray hard enough, it'll eventually go away. He lives in a very religious community. He reads a poem that talks about how tragic it is to know that God exists and yet children get cancer. He decides to become a bit skeptical on religion in general. Everyone around him does not support this idea. He becomes alienated by his church. He goes to work. His boss wants to talk to him privately, saying how, hey, this is a workplace about God, and if you don't have that faith, you know, mm, that's a problem. So, Opie quits. Then his whole community tries to intervene at his house to say that, you know, oh, you, you gotta follow God, man. That's the only way to get through this. The wife as well, trying to make him follow God and yeah, eventually he decides to leave his wife and just to be around with his daughter because she, the wife, seemed to be more about the church than her own dying daughter. Opie even gets in contact with the poet who wrote that poem that made him become skeptical of his own religion and turns out that she's been getting harassed and verbally abused online by his wife and their community. So to say this man's life has gone upside down just because he read a poem that he really resonated with, yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't really just explain just how crazy this is. So, anyway, the update. In a lovely turn of events, it's actually a wholesome update. A month ago, the night after I had posted my last update, my wife came to the hospital and confessed that she was feeling almost the same. While I was believing God doesn't exist, she believed he is evil. Our families pressured her that we weren't believing enough. That is why our daughter had gotten sick, and as I was struggling, they convinced her that it was my fault, which led to her being pressured to pray even more. So, I am the one here to blame. I could have seen the signs, but I am trying to make up things up to my wife for causing even more trouble and burdening her instead of helping her or listening. We have spent the night with our daughter and decided to just take her and run. So the next morning, we went home and packed a few bags and crossed the country. My wife and I talk a lot. Not sure where we are going from here afterwards, but we are currently considering staying or moving somewhere else and going no contact with our families as it becomes more and more clear to us that we have wasted so much time with praying and in church that we could have spent with our daughter instead. Currently, we only talk with our parents twice a week as our daughter shouldn't lose her grandparents now. We have gone no contact with everyone else from our community who are still trying to pressure and blame us and convince us to keep praying. My wife is another person without the pressure of our families and the community, and I'm falling in love with her again. Only now I realized that I haven't seen her laugh in ages. Two weeks ago, our daughter wanted to go to church, and we did, being greeted with a whole new level of community. The priest here is very open and kind, and I ended up telling him everything. He listened to my story and told me all the things you guys told me, that it is completely normal to lose faith or question God in these times, and that it was toxic what happened to us. He didn't try to get me to find back to God or to keep praying. He just 
just mentions that it might have been him, God himself, who wanted me to read the poem in order to change things. And at first I doubted it, but right now I'm not sure anymore. Everything has changed, and despite the fact that my daughter is still dying, we are happy and haven't been that close as a family since the diagnosis two years ago. My wife is as confused as I am to see how church can be and how community can work together and help each other instead of just threatening and blaming the way we were both raised and lived our entire lives. We go to church twice a week now as our daughter loves it and still believes, but we don't know yet if we will continue without her. We are both too overwhelmed to make a decision now. I haven't told my wife, but I have thought about making a pilgrimage to the Camino de Santiago with her. Maybe it will help us find back to God or find out if we don't have faith anymore, or will it just keep us away from falling in the black hole after our daughter dies? I will probably suggest it to her in a couple of weeks after seeing how everything develops in the community and what my wife feels, of course. Right now, I can't completely rule out that our journey with God is over as well as I can't rule out it's not. I just know we are on our way. My daughter has started writing poems as well. It has helped to improve her mood and seeing her laugh, after all, is the best feeling in the world and was definitely worth all the trouble. A big thank you to all of you for the help. I really appreciate this and will never be able to put in words how much that really means to me. I still haven't read any of your messages. My inbox is flooded, but I will start tonight once my girls are sleeping. I do understand now that it wasn't a screw up. I was just devastated in the moment I've made that post. It felt like my entire world was crashing and it was, but I would say for the better. And to end, here's a short poem my daughter wrote yesterday. I have the best mom. I have the best dad. I love you both. Now I'm asking, what if you love me so you can't say no to can we get a cat? <laughs> We're adopting a cat now. Thank you to all of you. It's a very necessary conclusion to this story to be reminded that, yeah, it's it's not so much the religion that makes it a problem for people. It's the people in the religion who ruin it for everyone else. Good on you, this priest, whoever they are. They, they, they do their job right. They do good. Good work. God is proud of you. I know this because... Uh, reasons. Anyway, that's the end of today's video. Once again, thank you as always for watching. Hope you appreciate the rambles. I need to drink some water now because my throat is dry. You do the same as well. And until next time, love your face. See you then. Bye-bye.